Good morning. Welcome to the Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman, the content executive here at Higher Things, and joining me is the executive director. Those are big, big words. This is my boss, Erica Jacoby. Erica, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing wonderful because I learn to think better when you come. Uh, we're talking about logical fallacies, the way that you think that sounds nice because it's, it's sort of that easy path to, to take, even if it's not the right path to take. The problem with just sort of the path of least resistance is sometimes it still ends up running head first into the wall. So we're going to try to avoid that today. Uh, Last time we learned another version of an ad hominem called a tu quoque, which is Latin for I am rubber and you are glue, and whatever you say (laughs) bounces off of me and sticks to you. It's a very efficient language, Latin. It's a shame that we stopped speaking it. But um, I don't know how to pronounce any of it. Yeah, right. Well, we'll we'll keep it English today. Uh, Teach me something new. Yeah, so today we're going to talk about another logical fallacy that's called the straw man argument. Um, and we're, again, remember, we're kind of pointing these out to you so that in the course of your life and in the course of discussing what is true and what isn't true or what is valid or not valid, you can, you can begin to identify these things. And, um, how'd you say it in the last po- podcast? Think good. Yeah. Think good. Um, think good. It's important. Think more gooder. <laughs> yeah. We're not, we're not, well, uh, we're so not trying when... to teach your kids bad grammar. I'm sorry. To think better. <laughs> When you see logical fallacies happening, though, um, it's easy to bite into them because it, it, it's yeah. sort of, again, that path of least resistance, but it's never going to end you in the right conclusion. And so when you can start to spot them, recognize them both in others and in yourself, uh, it, it helps you think good, but it also helps you figure out how to respond when you're encountering them because you're going to find some straw men out there. Uh, would you tell me what a straw man is, though, so I know where to find one? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and le- let's be <clears throat> diverse and say it can be a straw woman argument too. Straw person. A straw person. <laughs> Politically correct here, right? Um, oh, but wait. all joking aside, um, these arguments have been around, these fallacies have been around for a really long time, which tells you something about people, right? These logical well, fallacies nice. yeah, come up and because they are effective in derailing really getting at the truth. So that's why we're, we're making the point of pointing them out. Um, so yeah, just in simple terms, a straw man fallacy um, is when you misrepresent someone's argument to make it easier to dismiss. So um, when someone's presenting information or, or presenting an argument, um, you distort it uh, to make it, like I said, to make it easier to dis- to, to um, dismiss. Um, so you put, you take the person's actual argument and um, you kind of replace it or build on it with a more distorted or exaggerated or conflated version of their position, right? Um, It's um, hyperbole, right? It's exaggerating it, if that sort of makes sense. So it would be like getting um, a a flannel shirt and putting a bunch of straw in it and then making fun of it instead of me. (laughs) Why do you always make this about you? I didn't even make fun of you the last time. <laughs> I didn't even make fun of you the last time. I, I did okay. I did it with two quote. I did it. I was good. Yeah. So but so then give me an example of a straw man so that I, I can make sure I've got it pinned down then. Well, sure. Okay. Um so okay. Let's do it let's with get, theology. What do you think? Oh, theology. Well, let's yeah. see. I, so I know we I believe that do. we yeah, believe that uh, you should baptize babies. Right. right. Um, because, well, babies are born. Oh, this simple. is a good one. Um, and uh, we recognize that the babies are in need of salvation. This is the simplest way to deal with it. So Romans chapter six tells us the wages of sin is death. And the free gift of God is life everlasting in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And so it, it's really painful math. But can babies die? And, and the answer is, yeah. So the answer is that they need Jesus. And Jesus is given through baptism. So we should baptize babies. Now, it's easy to make a straw man however, Mm -hmm, of baptism mm -hmm. that um, we would say, well, how can a baby choose to be baptized? Babies can't choose to be baptized. So babies aren't actually baptized. This is a straw man argument. It's an argument that isn't actually the argument. It just sort of looks like it in a flannel shirt, but it's not the real Mm -hmm. thing. You want to hear another one? This is a real life example that you made me think of. Um, A friend of mine in high school um, was, was, did not believe in infant baptism. And when we argued it, he actually said to me, he's like, well, why don't you just take a crop duster and baptize everybody, right? There's the straw man argument. Because is that what so the argument is really about? Cause what is right, because what is really about? Right, because when you actually want to deal with that, well, I can say like five times, well, you're right, babies can't 
choose to go to church because they can't even choose not to poop themselves. And I, I can also talk about why it seems wrong to just run around with a super soaker yelling in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But that's not what we're actually talking about. It's sort of like it and easier to knock down. So we don't have to deal with the real thing. Yeah. But I want to talk about the real thing. Right, right. We want to talk about whether infant baptism is efficacious or not. Then that's the, that's the topic under discussion. Yeah. So before um, we talk about yeah. how to pick them out, um, yeah. maybe how, how can I keep myself from using them? Because I'm kind of prone to it. Yeah. I, I would rather put words in your mouth and address what you're actually saying. So how can I stop myself from using them? Well, that's really arguments? great because you're acknowledging, and I hope as we go through our different examples of logical fallacy, that you are kind of turning the lens on yourself as well as on your neighbor, because um, it is human nature to kind of fall into these fallacies. So it's great that you're kind of, you're kind of pointing it at yourself. At, at I that. a poor miserable sinner. Yeah. To you. Um, so I think that's actually the first step is to just, um, is to, um, is to think about it in those terms. Is it to think about it? Well, am I using this? Am I doing this? And when you approach a conversation in particular with, an, uh, with another person and you're having a discussion and trying to arrive at the truth, um, you, you want to think to yourself, am I listening, right? This is where you're actually, li- am I listening to what they're saying, right? And I think one of the best things you can do is to kind of re- repeat back their own argument. So if maybe I don't agree with you on infant, infant baptism, maybe I just kind of repeat back to you what you said. Is this what you're saying to me? Is this the topic that we're we're discussing? And I think that's a really actually a good starting point is just to do some actual listening because that is kind of loving and serving your neighbor, isn't it? Listening to yeah, them and, and hearing puts- what they have to say it puts kind of a curb and a guide on the conversation and we, we like those things. So that that's useful. Um, yeah. Yeah. How about what? Well, I was going to say, I mean, you can make, you can make, you can actually give an example of a straw man argument by saying, you know, um, you really shouldn't make straw man arguments. Well, a straw man argument to that would be like, Oh, I guess we just should not have arguments at all then. Right. That's actually making a straw man yeah. argument out of it. Right. Right. Well, um, no, because we, we need to figure this, this out. But let's let's maybe do it in a better way. How can I respond to this this thing then? Um, because you just sort of put me in a corner. Right. Right. Um, well, I think, again, what you're I mean, I don't really have anything better for you other than um, asking yourself, are you distorting my argument. So if, are you asking me if if somebody comes at me with a straw man argument what to do because we talked about how to kind of apply the apply it to yourself and check yourself. So are you asking me, you know, how do I if you I'm apply in a discussion it to my neighbor especially when my neighbor gets heated cuz straw man arguments don't tend to come out in those sort of good natured discussions. No, today. they don't. And I'll give you like a real recent example of one and maybe that's a it's a good one to kind of recheck us cuz it kind of gave you the silly one. Um but for example, um, the Black Lives Matter movement, there are lots of folks who say that uh, they distort that argument or they present a straw man fall- fallacy by saying that its supporters hate all white people. So maybe the response then would just be to ask the question, do you hear me saying that I hate people who aren't Black? Right. Because that's not my intention. And if that is what I have said, I want to apologize for that. But what I would like to talk about is this, not that. Yeah, and we, there we you actually go. need to refocus. Then, right? Yeah, we kind of need to. We kind of need to dar- again draw it back to really the topic that's under the dis- under discussion. Um, and in that case, it would be if you're talking about the the black the Black Lives Matter movement, you're going to want to listen. Um, and if you if you sense a straw man fallacy, um, you're going to actually you know, sometimes just repeating back what the straw man argument that they've presented to you. So you're actually saying to me that supporters hate all white people, all Black Lives Matter people, all hate all all white people. And sometimes hearing the straw man argument, it, it kind of exposes mm-hmm. it to them, right? Um, and again, it's, it's, it's bad argumentation to use all, to use the extreme language, all or never or always. Um, that's, that's really kind of a weak argument as well. Right. Um, and so right. to kind of, kind of draw it back, kind of repeat it back. Um, and really and that kind of slows again, the pace too, right? It does. It does. Yeah. yeah. So I, I can sort of say, um, in, instead of that, 
what do you think that I am saying here? Because there's a disconnect along the way and, and we need to figure out what that is before we can, we can go on. Yep. And again, most of the time it's about, I think the straw man argument comes when you touch on a really sensitive topic, right? You have poked somewhere that it, it kind of hurts. And so I'm going to protect myself and attack, right? And so maybe what you say is I'm aware that I've touched on some, I've touched a nerve. Um, let's talk about that. That might be the best, most loving and Christian way to kind of, kind of, to kind of talk about that, that topic or whatever truth you're trying to arrive at. Right. Because one of the biggest differences between genuine argumentation and, and the straw men are that there's never any nuance to straw men arguments. There's always nuance to the real ones. And so what we, we even need to be able to do is sort of say, I don't want to paint with a broad brush here. I'm, I'm willing to be nuanced. I want to have a real discussion. But if all we're going to do is sort of paint with these broad brushes, this might not be a discussion that can go forward. I'm not trying to corner you or trick you or beat you. But we need to talk about the ins and outs of the thing. And you can usually tell you're in a straw man argument if there's never any nuance allowed. Yeah. And at that point, it's OK to tap out because you once again, you may have just realized that you've come into a discussion where you are not entering that discussion with the same purpose, which is to um, come to an agreement or to come to an understanding. This person really has an ax to grind. And at that point, it's okay to tap out, tap out. Cause you're not going to get anywhere with it other than it's going to be like proverbially proverbial banging your head against a wall. Right. And that's okay. There's tap a, out. There's a difference between helping and winning and yeah. we're not here to win. We are actually here to help. Helping is about the good for your neighbor. Winning is just about looking good for yourself. And if that's what you are after, you should repent. And if that's what your neighbor's after, there's only so much help that's going to come. But if, if it can be a genuine discussion where there's, there's help, there can be nuance, there can be love, there can be forgiveness, then we want to make sure we think good while we do it. So we're going to avoid logical fallacies like the straw man. Yep. Awesome. Got anything else for us? Not today. Isn't that enough? All right. That's plenty. We'll have to do. You're always expecting me to do something more. <laughs> On that note, before I get fired, we out. <laughs> mm -hmm.